Oh, you got gaskets? Lots and lots of points cover gaskets. Oh, yeah? I got valve gaskets, push rod gaskets. Hey, man, look, it's like one of those never-ending things where you're on TV, but you're on TV, but you're on TV, but you're on TV, but you're on TV. See how it, like, circles around? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And take manifold gaskets. Oh. I found out why Joe's bike was running really shitty. Why is that? Well, one, his heads are fucked. <laughs> That'll do it. But look at this, this is his intake gasket. I'm looking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's not that's not gonna it work. Was, it was leaking. That's not gonna work. Let's do the forever intake gasket. Forever intake gasket. <laughs> oh hey, hello, hi. Uh this is Andy, joined by my best friend Mike. Uh Today, uh, we're making another episode from, from Plain Jane to Totally Insane, where we uh, are doing the complete build on this 81 uh, FXS uh, from one of our customers. Uh, today, so I know you guys have been asking, a lot of you guys have been bitching, we're working on it. Relax, calm down, take a Xanax, smoke a cigarette, whatever you gotta do. It's not the only bike I'm building. And we got other bikes to build too, but. Um. <laughs> but anyway, today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be completely tearing down this uh, 81 shovel, uh, and we're gonna get into her because we're gonna be completely rebuilding her for the uh, for the customer here, make sure she's in tip-top shape. Uh, gonna tear we, it all the way down and check all the tolerances, make sure that I ain't gotta split the cases. Might have to split the cases. If yeah, so, so be it. We're gonna, there's a couple of mods already done to this bike. It supposedly has a hot cam in it, uh, some other things. Bottom end oilers. Bottom end oilers, a couple fancy bits on it. So we're gonna go through it, tear it down, I'm show curious. you guys. I'm curious to see what's inside of it. Yeah, me too. I wanna see how beefy it is. It might be filled with rocks. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> uh, Joe's bike was filled with sand. Uh, but we're gonna tear this totally down for you guys, <laughs> step by step. Uh, give you guys a quick t tutorial here on a shovel head and how you uh, completely disassemble it. So uh, yeah, here we go. So if you guys didn't see our last episode, we did a time lapse video of the same motor coming out of this bike. Um, and we got a little bit of negative feedback on it saying that it wasn't very informative, yada, yada, yada. If you don't know how to take a motorcycle apart, then you shouldn't be building a motorcycle. So we figured that we would just do a time lapse on that and with the holiday and everything. We were uh, trying to be quick on that. Um, yeah, pretty busy. But on this, this one here, um, we're going to go through the step by step like I said earlier. Um, so first things first, get your motor out of your bike. Um, once you got it out of your bike, you can get one of these fancy engine stands here or you can get a cheap one from the Harbro Freight. Um, either way works. Um, we have a couple of them here at the shop. Uh, any of your hoses here, like this, 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 and this, we just go ahead and hack those off. We're going to replace those anyways. Yeah, um, all dry rotted and hard as a rock. So. Yeah, you're going to want to put new hoses on it, especially if it's a, a, an older vintage bike like this. The we're hoses gonna do, are. We're going to do fancy braided lines. Yeah, obviously. we're going to do some real nice shit on here. So, uh, um, so on the bottom end oilers, I'm going to put braided on there. Those are bottom end oilers there. It typically doesn't come on your shovel heads. Um, so we're interested to get into it. So uh, we're going to get at it. All right, so first and foremost here, we're going to take off the oil lines. These are the lines that feed the oil to the front and rear cylinder. Which is the one negative about a shovel. You've noticed on a lot of our bikes, uh, we run sp split lines. Split line system that goes up the center, but that tends to get in the way of all the uh, push rods and stuff, and you're trying to adjust those. So we're going to do a different setup on here. What yeah. size are you using there? Uh, half inch. Half inch. Just loosen these up. Which they're already really loose. <laughs> Just say we found a lot of interesting stuff on yeah. this bike since we bought it. So whoever put it together, that's why I want to pull it apart and check everything. Because whoever put it together doesn't know what the hell they're doing. And I'm a professional alcoholic. I can fix anything. All right. And you should never have to put um, pipe tape in these. If you're having to put pipe tape in them, it means that your rubber O-rings are shot. And they're super cheap. You can buy them on eBay, buy them anywhere. I mean, they're really cheap. Where are those O-rings at inside the That's, that's this right there. here. Nope, they're like a pressure fit 
whole thing. Try to pull it back. It's old and crusty. There we go. That's all it is. And all it does is slide up against there. And then when you tighten this down, it squishes it against it and creates a seal. If it's leaking, those are shot. And these ones look like they're pretty shot. It reminds me of a leak in your O-rings be a So tweaking. do not wrap this thread in pipe tape because that will not fix anything. It's still going to leak back here in the back where it seals. That's on both lines. So the oil line system that we typically run here, we run it off the factory oil outlet here. We bring it up around the back, run into this T. Uh, these are all custom made. We made all these. Um, and we run them up the sides here. That way you have individual lines that go to both of the rockers. That way you have even oil distribution, and you get as much oil to the front as you do to the back. That way you don't worry about starving that front cylinder of oil. Now the only place that you should put pipe tape is on the threads going into the rockers and into your lower case. So this fitting should have pipe tape down inside of it because otherwise it will leak. And as you can tell by this one, there's no tape in it. So I'm sure if this thing ever did run, it leaked profusely. But from what we gathered, the guy that had it never got it running. You can also tell on the side of the, the butterfly on the s and is open because it's bent or it's got a burr or something in it. So I'll be going through the whole carburetor and rebuilding that too. But let's go ahead. We got the oil lines all loose. So let's pull the carb off. This is an s, &S style carburetor. They're very reliable carburetors. Um, they're a little bit more of a gas guzzling carburetor, but they are a very reliable and easily tunable and changeable carburetor. Gas guzzling just means that it's more high performance. Yeah. It's, uh... We're going to take a 516. And what carburetor is on this currently? It's an s, &S Super E shorty. Which is what we highly recommend for any shovel head motor. Um, the real reliable. Uh, never give enough trouble. If we do have a bike that comes in or whatever, we highly suggest those as well as run them on all of our bikes, I would say, pretty much. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm running a CV on my, my new one just because I heard they get really good gas mileage. So you're going to need... Uh, you're going to need a 5 16 uh, extension, Allen. All one. If it's got the original bolts in it. Some people put just regular bolts on it, which is fine. I prefer yeah. the Allen's. Hey. Oh, hey, look, guys, it's Brian and his friends. Hey, <laughs> friends. And his friends. So you get two of those bolts to take the carb out. And this is why we take the motor out of the bike. It's a hell of a lot easier doing <laughs> this out of the bike than in the bike. We've done in the bike. I've done it in the bike. In the parking times. lot of Harley dealerships. <laughs> Um, I actually, I actually tore mine out and replaced all of my intake gaskets at uh, Davenport Swap. Oh, you've been to the Davenport Swap? Mm -hmm. Somebody put RTV on this. That's a no bueno. That's a no. You can see there's gas leaking through it, so it obviously didn't seal. Uh, no a, RTV. No RTV. RTV bad. Bad RTV. No likey. That's garbage. So that's your s, &S Super E shorty. Leaking gas all over my hand. But you can see the butterfly is not closed, so something in there. This time fuckery. Yeah. I'm assuming maybe, maybe the flywheel's bad or it's got a really bad burr. Or somebody cranked the piss out of it and fucked it up. So that's something I'll be going through. Dumbasses. So we found out what happened here. I don't even think that's RTV. The O-ring inside the gasket here is... Shot to shit, so they tried using some type of It almost sealant. looks like glue. Some type of... Because it's hard as a rock. Some type of glue or silicone or some shit that, uh, to seal that instead of replacing the gasket, which you should never, ever do. Nope. So now we're going to spin it back around here. That one's going, isn't it? Get back to the front. Alright, now we're going to take off the intake. Now take off your intake here. You're going to need are, some Allens. These are aftermarket. You want some long reaches? Where is my... I don't know if I can fit this in there. 
Negative. You need a different adapter. I need an extension. It's in, in there. We got new tools. I don't know where everything is yet. This. 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 I'm gonna go ahead and hook this up. And these are actually in there wrong. I highly recommend getting one of these. It really speeds the process up. I used to do this all by hand with hand tools. It is quite the fucking challenge. Yeah, that one's in there. Can get the long reach. Well, I'm gonna have to. We can get the long reach uh, Allen's here and uh, get those two out. So some dumb shit went ahead and tucked these up in there right by the fins. So instead of using our fancy tools, we're gonna have to get the old-fashioned regular wobble Allen's out. Majority of the nuts and bolts on this thing are going to be uh, standard size. Unless they've been replaced with metrics. These Metric. are nice. I run these on my shovel, I believe. I either run them on my shovel or on my iron. They're nice because they're easy to remove. Let's see this. Yeah, whoever put that in there. And lick my nuts. But when you're dealing with a motor that's 37 years old, you tend to run into these problems. They've been torn apart, put back together, torn apart, put back together so many times. A lot of people get in a hurry and they don't plan on putting it back together or taking it apart again once they put it back together. So well, a lot of people fail to think ahead. Thinking ahead. Yeah, always think ahead like when you're building a motor that you might have to pull this thing apart on the side of the road or in a buddy's garage, you know, or if you're far away like we, we ride really far away. You're going to have to pull it apart. So when you're assembling it, try to assemble everything so that you can get to it. As easy as possible. That's kind of how I build bikes. I build bikes so they can be torn down on the side of the road. I like to keep everything open and easy access. That's exactly how I'll be building this bike. And this bike's going to be really fancy. Lots of chrome. So that's what the customer ordered. Now that we got those brackets off, your intake just pops right off there. There's more of that glue. There's more glue. And uh... Like it's glued on we there. We don't like to see that. Yeah, that is glued on there. Not only is that glue going to ruin these rubber gaskets yeah that's glue that's some type of glue you don't ever want to put RTV or any kind of glue on any of your rubber gaskets because the uh, the components inside the in the RTV will actually eat away at this rubber mm -hmm. you guys can't really tell but just by touching this you can yeah, feel that it's good. real brittle um, eventually what's gonna happen that's gonna crack it's gonna leak it's gonna run to a lot of problems down in down the road. Seems uh, clean on the intake side. So you don't ever want to run RTV on those. Right now Mike's checking the inside. Yeah, I put my fingers in there, giving it a the little heads, love. Giving it a little finger loving. There you go. No lube required. All right, now we're going to pull the rockers off. Now the impact that we're using here, uh, they are not sponsored by Craftsman or anything like that. This is the uh, lithium ion V20. Uh, it's got enough power to break the bolts loose, uh, and it's got enough power to tighten them down, but it's not aggressive enough to snap bolts. I mean, obviously, if you're using them on tiny bolts, stuff like that, it will snap them. Um, you never want to start a bolt with one of these. Um, you always want to hand start them, and then once you get a good three, four threads on them, and you get them nice threaded in there, then you can go ahead and hit it with that. Um, even though we use this in a lot of things, this is mostly for disassembly. Um, when we reassemble a bike, we like to go through, check the torque specs on everything, make sure everything's snug, make sure everything's where it needs to be, make sure uh, that we're not over-tightening the bolts. Um, yeah, these are definitely handy to have. Um, 
as you can see, all the tools that we have laid out here, um, there's quite a bit that goes into it. Uh, that's why we're giving you guys the sizes. That way you can have these tools in your toolkit um, to be able to do the stuff on the side of the road, like Mike said earlier. Um, check out our tool roll video if you haven't seen it already. Um, that goes through a lot of the tools that we use and that we keep on our bikes with us at all times, so you can do this. So now, we're going to go ahead and remove the rockers. What size are you using on that, Mike? Oh, that is a half inch. Half inch. The majority of your bolts here are going to be half inch, 9 sixteenths. A lot of them are half inch. get one of these drills. This usually takes me three times as long to get all these fuckers out. They didn't put a fancy one in there. No, oh, son. That looks bitches. like a Harbro. Pulling the hole. Cut out. Yeah. You had a lot of washers falling. Now what happened here is we went to go loosen that one up and uh, pulled the whole stud. Pulled the whole stud out. There's no big deal. Just checking the play and the rockers. I'm not feeling any, so that's good. So you should have no play whatsoever in those side to side, back and front. You shouldn't have any play side to side. If you do, take them apart. So once you got your rockers removed, that's going to expose your valves, valve springs. We're going to go ahead and remove all the old gaskets and everything. We're replacing all the gaskets uh, on this motor. Um, like I said, we're going through the entire thing here. Um, so anything that needs to be replaced, can be. we're going to replace on it. Now, if you're doing this for the first time yourself, I recommend taking all your nuts and bolts and everything and setting them in a certain pile. Put them in plastic baggies, labeling them so you know which nuts and bolts, washers, etc., came from what place. Um, there are quite a few bolts, nuts and washers that go into taking this apart. The side had a fancy bolt on it. Oh, nice. Um, that way you don't lose your stuff, and I mean we've torn these, stuff, uh, these apart enough that we know exactly which nuts and washers and everything go where they need to go. Um, but if you are doing this for the first time, uh, labeling, labeling all your stuff and whatever uh, will help you out in the long run. So now we got the second rocker taken off. Now these two on the back here, you don't have to take those off. Not unless you're going to have to do work on the rockers. Yeah, unless you're disassemb disassembling those completely, like we were talking about the play and the other ones earlier, um, right those now, two you don't yeah. have to take apart. Right now we're taking it apart and checking it. It's sad, those ones are really good too. Let somebody fucker read the front of the rocker. We're going to go ahead and replace this rocker with a new old stock one. Um, it's like somebody either dropped it or laid it down. I think they dumped the bike because the nose cone's a little dented up too. All that's going to be replaced. We always use new old stock parts. Um, we don't like putting repot parts on these motors and stuff. Um, we keep them as vintage as possible. Um, and it's the, the SNS rods. 
the uh, new old stock, old stock parts, they not only keep it period correct on the motor, but a lot of the repop ones are not made as well as they once were back in the day. Um, so that's why we like to replace the new old stocks. Yep, it's got all SNS adjustable push rods except for one. Hmm. One push rod is an original Harley one. So that of the reason why I don't work for shit. So now we got the rockers all taken off. Uh, next we're going to move on to... Uh, I'm going to pull the carbon support off just to get it out of my way. I'm going to pull that off, get this, uh, get our work area cleaned up here real quick, and then we'll get back at it. Alright, now we're going to take the bolts off. Now that we got that bracket off of the carburetor, we're going to take these nuts off here for the heads. You're going to have four of those bolts. This is a specially designed wrench that we have uh, custom fabricated. There's, there's five bolts. <laughs> Four or five, potato, potato, whatever. And he started out on a crotch rod. Hey, well, let me see. One, two, three. Oh, there's only five. I only see five. They're not crotch rods. They don't use bolts, do they? It's all like just like it's mostly like plastic snaps. rice paper and glue. Rice paper and glue. Yeah, and plastic snaps. I thought it was like those snaps you used to hold a fucking door. Like the trim on. on? Of a car. Yeah, like those little. Yeah, mostly those. I yeah. thought that's what held the motors together. Yeah. He's got to go to sleep sometime, you know. <laughs> it's gonna take forever. These fuckers are in there. And he's got fancy acorn nuts, so I can't use. Ooh, tool. acorns. So we're going to go ahead and let the time lapse hit these because Mike's going to be here for a while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, bet. Push, push, Bob. All right, now that we got the uh, the jugs and the heads off. Oh, no, this is right. All right. What do we got going on here? Okay, so when, you, when you're working on push rod blocks, you always want to put these uh, holes on the inside. What do those do? The they oilers. oil the uh, If you look on the inside, the it's kind of hard to see the oil, but if you look down in there, you can see a hole only yeah. on the inside. Right. And so if you run them on the wrong way, oh, they're not oiling. It's oil, and you're going to have a bad time. Bad time. Bad time. Which oh, yeah. is even worse when you have Hydraulic. lower end oilers, and they're just pushing oil and going nowhere. And we already found one in there that was backwards, so. Oh, uh, I found three. Three of them that were in Dumbasses. All right, now that we got those out. How's she looking inside there? From what I can see, the cam don't look bad. There's a fresh right. That cam looks pretty well, pretty well put in. How do? The inside here, everything looks to be tip top so far. Pay attention to this. This is the ignition system getting pulled out right here. This is the ignition system getting pulled out right here. This is a butterfly valve. It's a butterfly valve. It's the canooter. It's the canooter. It's the roto girder spectrum. Yeah, and that's that's actually a grape sensor. Grapes. Don't ever forget that early uh, shovel heads are just. Our late shovel heads are just uh, early evos. Glorified evos. Yep. <laughs> so this here, you remove two bolts out of there. Which bolts were those? These uh, Torx bits? Yeah. So you want to remove this out of here. We're going to disconnect this. And it comes around here. And comes down to this wire here. We're actually gonna get rid of all that. We're gonna put electronics. So what in. happens right here is you're sitting. This thing is bumping. Every time it bumps and interrupts. As soon as it interrupts, it charges, drops a fucking uh, drops a bit of bolt, goes through this, tells you when to fire, left and right. Drops a bit of bolt. Drops a bit of bolt. A little bit. Just like it, she's out. How's she looking? Worn out. Looking a little beat up. Make sure your contacts are good on that. When you when you time these bitches, you want to time them. So narrow, 
narrow, yeah, uh, what was that? Narrow hump. There's gonna be a wide hump, there's gonna be a narrow hump. Run the narrow hump to the point where it just touches and starts to open. Just touch, just touch the tip. Just stick just, the tip in. Yep, right where she opens. As soon as she's about to open, you turn it back, time it to that, you're good to go. I don't care what you're talking about. You don't care what you're talking about. I need something to catch Everything. All right, now we need an oil pan. Now you're gonna wanna place your oil pan right here. Oh, we found a, who wrote on the dolly face? Somebody wrote bitch on it. What is it? It says, happy bitch. Ha happy bitch. All right, all right, well, at least she's happy, I guess. She likes to hang out and watch us tear shit apart. Give her a light tapping with the uh, old rubber mallet. We can give her a heart tap because we're getting rid of this cone. Hey, you say that, I could Tina that up. It's already Tina. I'm my extra Tina. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. See, she's squirting there. She's juicing. Who put that? Oil's burnt. God damn it. It's a goddamn sick of weed in there, man. It's mm. missing the uh, spacer. Missing the spacer there. It's trying to have a beer. Been running right on the fucking cone. Run, running right on the fucking cone. That ain't make good. Her, that make your oiler jump out. There's supposed to be a small washer right there that spaces it. What the this fuck is, is actually, that? This is actually supposed to be in the cone. This is your brass pushing. It is not supposed to come off on the can. Okay. It's so all right. This, this goes... Inside in there. You can see that little pin. Okay. That's not supposed so, to be loose like that. So basically what you're saying oh, is actually pressing. some fucking retard put it back some unintelligent individual, I gotta be politically correct. Re -re. Some fucking retard. Some fucking re-re. Some fucking retard or retarded or anything. He's fucking slobbering on his some goddamn re -re. wife's mother. Slobbering on his wife's mother. Put this together all wrong. Are we gonna get it right? Are we gonna get it put together right? How's that looking? It's, uh, uh, that's the Andrews cam that's, that's in there. That's a good news, Brian. This is the Andrews. What model is that? That's pretty flat. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, but. That's BH. The, the BH. The Andrews BH butthole. Butthole? <laughs> It's a butthole cam. It's that butthole cam. It's that butthole. That's the one of them cams. It's got a little, got a little hotness in it, and make your butthole yeah. pucker up. This ain't bad. This ain't bad. It, like, ain't bad. it smells burnt. Mm -hmm. Don't smell quite as burnt as that other one down the other end. Well, when their oilers ain't working Jesus right. Jesus Christ! Fucking pull apart my goddamn iron head. You'll, you'll smell burnt. And you got your pistons inside here. I'm gonna hold one. Quite a bit of rod play in no, there. That, that's that's nothing. That's good. <laughs> that is good. I was hoping it was because I didn't really want to. Good there. Pull it apart, but yeah, that's that's really good play, dude. We're not wanting to split the cases here if we don't have to. See the rod play on the pan head. No, it's this this rod actually flexes all the way over and touches here and here. Well, then that's that's better. No, this is. A... <laughs> So we're all good there. We ain't gonna have to split the cases. Just by telling what we can see inside here, everything's good to go. Yeah, she's good in balance too because she's not dipping and dropping on me. Usually when they're unbalanced, you'll go roll it like that. I can actually kick down or to kick back up. It shouldn't do that. You don't it's evenly want, you balanced. That. Yep. How's the rings looking? They bladder replacement. Rooms. We're gonna replace all these. Well, you know what those scorings were. Yep. Somebody had the piston rings in line with each other. Yep. Which is giving you a lot of blow by, and it was scoring the side of the piston. That's what he's talking about here. Is these notches here? They should be. They should be ninety off. Ninety off each other. So spun around like that. And you one want notch there, the one notch there, and run them to the outsides. Not on the insides. Not on the insides. Well, 
right. Tiny ball bearing in there. So, check valve. the only thing left on this motor here is to take this oil pump assembly off, which is this whole assembly here. Um, we're not going to take that off right now, only because there's a lot of little bitty pieces that are inside there. When you take it off, everything's going to come out of there. We're going to show that in another video. Uh, it's another common question that a lot of people ask rebuilding the oil pump. Um, this oil pump here is what feeds all the oil to the motor and makes sure that it doesn't starve the cylinders of the oil and make sure that they stay properly lubricated and everything. Um, so we're going to do that in our next up upcoming video on how to rebuild them some bitches and make sure that they're good to go. So you're going to want to use a nice plastic bristle brush right here like we got on this drill here. Get the uh, shit off the top of the piston so you can see what size they are. These are 010 which means that they are 10 over uh, the factory pistons that normally go in it. Um, so that's what we wanted to check on there. Um, you want to make sure that, like I said, you use a plastic bit like this. That way you don't fuck the pistons up and uh, then you'll end up having to replace pistons. So now that we know these are 10 over, we know what we're dealing with. We can go from here. So all in all, turn it apart. Uh, ran into a few problems here and there, you know. You know, tricks of the trade, come to the job. I don't know if tricks of the trade, but it's not a trick. It shouldn't be a trick of the trade. Anyways, yeah, so, you know, sometimes you find shitty stuff, sometimes you don't. Uh, this is typical uh, of a motor that, like I said, is, you know, 37 years old. So, um, so let's recap. RTV? Uh -uh. No, 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 no RTV. Whatever kind of weird glue this is. Uh, glue or any, no, no, no. You don't need any of that. Um, it's the exciting part about old motors is you always find like a little bit of math. Up. Right. A little bit of glue. Right, meth the hell of a drug. Yeah, know? meth is a hell of a drug. It was really popular back in the years. Right, days. right, right. So I can see how this motor went together, how it possibly yeah. did. So, um, so lesson one, no RTV. Lesson two, no math. Uh, this motor had some pluses. The tolerances yeah. are good. Cams good in great shape. There, is good. The jugs are good. The pistons are good. Yeah. Everything. I mean, besides the little RTV, I mean, it, it, it's, yeah. it's pretty good. Somebody just glued it together ah, instead yeah. of using nuts and bolts. Right. You don't want to use glue. So. Oh, the carburetor's fault. The carburetor's fault. Well, we'll take care of that. That's not good. That's deal. probably what the glue was for. Right. 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 They're probably glue in the carburetor. But anyways. Well, uh, I guarantee you. Yeah. Probably sucked in through the glue. I bet you a dollar. Dollar two. And $1.50. $1.50 bet there's glue in the car. That'll be in our next episode. I uh, hope you guys learned some stuff from this teardown. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, anything like that, put, put your hands down. He doesn't know what to do with this. No, down. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, anything like that, or if uh, we didn't answer a question that you guys were looking up for us to answer, uh, leave it in the comment section below. Uh, make sure you check out our Facebook page, uh, our Instagram, um, of course, YouTube channel. Uh, go check out our website, www.transcenterchoppers.com. Uh, that's where you can get all your tramp merch, uh, shirts, uh, custom parts we make, all that good shit. See pictures of bikes that we do, uh, we've done in the past, uh, all that good stuff. Um, if you can't find us on there, look me up on Pornhub. He's on, yeah, Pornhub, or Punish 2. I can't weird, remember what it is. Weird, but something would do this, yeah. Um, but yeah, anyways. Uh, but, uh, yeah, like I said, if you guys got any questions, leave them below. Uh, make sure to check out our next video every Saturday. Um, we'll probably get back into some of the pan head next time. Um, probably get back more into, like, tutorials and stuff like that. We'll, we'll, we're going to keep you guys up to date as much as we can and get you guys' suggestions out as quick as we can. Um, there's been a lot of suggestions been coming in for videos and stuff like that. And we've been getting a lot more work and yeah. Uh, the winter time is obviously slow a little bit, um, so we're gonna, you know, we got a couple of bike builds here and there that we're doing. Uh, so we're gonna try to show you guys as much as we can. Um, but just stay tuned, keep watching, hit that subscribe button so you can see when our new videos come out. Ring that bell, that way you guys will be updated when our new videos come out. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know why you watch any other YouTube channel because we're probably the raddest shit on the internet, I'm pretty sure. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so tune in next week. Uh, we're going to also start posting uh, weekly videos here coming soon. Uh, it's a lot of work to do these videos, so we don't want to slap a bunch of bullshit together. High quality, high quality shit coming from us only. Check us out. 
in our next video, and we'll see you next time. Bye.